This beautiful piece was inspired by the Bergman Simplex, and I wanted to turn it into a sci-fi handgun, and this was the result of that process. Keep watching and I'll show you how I made this. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. By the way, I just got sick and my voice is a little different on this video. Anyway, this is how I started the process. I stumbled upon this unique and cool piece, the Bergman Simplex. It caught my attention of how cool and unique it looked. However, I had a problem. I need to turn this into a sci-fi handgun. The first thing that popped into my mind was, how can I show you the entire process? Oh, that is simple. I'll just record the entire thing and show it. Problem solved, right? No! Modeling took 4 hours, and posting a video that long with me saying gibberish and reading it is not going to work. I'm still thinking about a format that allows me to show you how to make cool stuff without taking that long, so a time lapse looked like the best option at the moment. But don't worry, I will still keep talking with my boring voice so you don't fall asleep. I remember when I started into 3D modeling making this would not be possible. I sucked at 3D modeling, which I still suck even today but maybe less. Also back then I didn't know nothing about using references, which costed quite a lot of patience and time. Using reference images is a great way to start the foundation of your 3D models, because creating something in thin air without having references is quite difficult. But if you say, oh I can model without using references, I don't believe you. Your brain shows you a lot of references images for you, and if your brain doesn't have it, then your computer has it. I have a folder in my computer with 14,000 images categorized just about references, and I usually don't save everything I see on the internet. I save only stuff I see that is unique and cool, so maybe almost everything on the internet. But I don't even know how many images are inside my brain. A visual library of millions of images are not too crazy to say it. Funny story, I just saw a picture of a toy yesterday, and I immediately recognized of having that toy when I was a child. Our memory stores a lot of information over a long period of time. And this also reminds me, if there's anything you want me to cover in Blender to help you, like a beginning tutorial or something more specific, hit me up in the comments down below. Just don't put stupid crap like, you suck! I already know that. I plan to make a video talking about visual referencing because I think it's quite important and people may not understand why or how to use them properly on your projects. That was me after all when I started to make 3D models a while back. I thought using references was like copying and I didn't like to use it. I am smart enough to make it myself from scratch. Yeah. I was dumb. Over time I saw how powerful they were. Even more now because we have AI and we can have inspiration from the dreams of our robots. How cool is that? Um, I lost track of what I was talking about. Oh yeah, the time lapse. And you can see by the footage that I really don't do anything that crazy. I'm just using simple tools like cuts, joining edges, merging points. What I'm doing here isn't that really complex. If you are a beginner, you will see that and think, oh my god, I cannot do that. But here's the catch. I am really don't have to think how to move the camera. It is automatic. I already know the commands inside my head, so everything is memorized. I don't have to think to do stuff. And that is what I give you as an advice to beginners to experiment with Blender enough so you get comfortable using the tools, the basic navigation, the hotkeys. Those are super important because if you take a whole amount of time just to move a couple of points, you will not be able to model things like this because it will take you too much time to do it. While modeling the entire gun took me 4 hours, it didn't feel like that amount of time because I have fun in the process. I like modeling, it's easy for me because I've tried a bunch of time, failed a couple things I won't show you here, maybe one day, who knows, but that's just it, it's, just, it's a long term journey, you cannot expect results right after you see a tutorial, you have to test it, improve it and get better with time. But this is how you improve it and I will go as far as to see advanced tutorials so again in the mindset of how to do advanced stuff because if you are just 
seeing beginner tutorials, you will not improve because you are just learning the basics. But maybe if you see some advanced stuff, you can rewire your brain into understanding how to properly use the tools to make something better. So basically, just understanding the process is also quite important. By the way, give me a thumbs up if you like the video this far, or if you think I'm stupid, you can use the thumbs down as well. Maybe I could have done the same model in less than 4 hours. Here's the thing, I didn't know exactly what I was going to make. All I knew was, I like this, I want to turn this into a sci-fi handgun, because I am a sci-fi nerd. So I experimented with this model in a lot of parts, I reshaped stuff to see if I like it, and continued. And I didn't have more reference material per se to help me with that, but I used my brains and the visual library reference I made of the years to imagine how could I make it to look cooler. And so, a lot of time was spent just trying to make Make it look cooler and nice. I saved some steps to show you how I did that. Modeling is just like playing with dough. What you have to translate that as 3D geometry for your model using the Blender tools. So you gotta know how to use the tools in order to achieve that. And here's quite an important thing. You don't need to know all the 3D modeling processes. There is stuff in Blender that I still don't know how to use and so far didn't need it. What you need to know is how to get the results you want. I want to make a hole here, should I use a boolean or do an inset extrude or a bridge loop on the edges. That is all about experience. The tools aren't that complex once you understand them. You have to get comfortable with using them. That is more important. So here's how I can describe how to make this sci-fi handgun. I saw something cool and wanted to turn it into a sci-fi handgun. So I grabbed it as a reference. Then I started to model using a plane, the first basic volume shape of it. But even here, I started to make some changes already. I knew I didn't want to make the hammer, so I already imagined and decided not to make it. Then I extruded to make the basic 3D volume shape and used the mirror modifier to mod just half of it. Then I made the barrel and started to round some geometry around the edges. That is how I imagined it. Then I started to make some tests with the shape I wanted in the back. Then reshaped the handle here to something I liked and added the trigger, the bullet holes, some details and fine-tuned the shape. It was probably the most time-consuming phase. Then I applied the bullet operations to the mesh that I liked. And while I could make some holes and small details using texture techniques, I have decided to mod them in 3D. Because my intended use for this model is inside a game engine on a third-person shooter project. I clean everything up, the topology, all the triangles, and simplify the geometry the best I could, as to lower the triangle count and maybe change some stuff. And here we have our finished model, on the steps which I consider finished, because 3D art is never done unless you call it. Some areas could have used more work, but this is the stage which I go to the texture phase. The handle here, which I haven't decided what to do exactly, so you can see it's a bit generic at the moment. I already just by looking at this have some ideas of how I'm going to texture it and maybe after or during the texture I would change the 3D parts a little more. Who knows? That is why 3D modeling is a unique process and why you will not be able to make two identical 3D models without exactly doing everything the same, which is quite boring and because we are not machines it will turn out different and this is why you need to use references. And now see if you are interested in keeping watching because this video just reached the end. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video. I'm going now. Bye. Seriously, I'm really going. You can keep watching though, if you want it. I mean, you can do anything you want, right? Go subscribe.